Okay, you guys, I'm back to recording. I feel still a little rusty, so please bear with me. If I don't seem like I'm my normal self, I haven't filmed in, it's been, it's been well over a week. I don't even remember the last thing that I filmed, to tell you the truth. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get back into it. I want to get back into it. Um, things around here have kept me busy too. It hasn't only been because of what happened with Dora, but a lot of it has been. I've just, it's just, I feel like a lot of my, my energy is, has just been sapped because I've just, I've been pretty sad. Um, and that's, that's the problem with, you know, grief when you lose a loved one, even if it's a fur baby. You really miss them. It's like losing a member of your family, for goodness sakes. But um, I, this is the video that I wanted to film a few days ago. And instead, I made the other video. Okay, so technically, I did film something before. It was the video I put up this past Friday. But what I mean is, I haven't filmed a reaction type video in a good while. And this is the one I was interested to check out because it's a little different. It's how Bill Burr plays with the mic. But I think the thumbnail or the little, you know, when you hover your mouse over the thing and sometimes it plays a little sample of the, of the video, the, it was showing somebody else, not Bill Burr. So I was, I didn't know how, my, oh, you know what it might have been, maybe why it was showing that is because whoever does this video, and I don't remember the channel that it's from, but I will obviously put a link to it in the description. Maybe they're comparing other stand-up comics to how, to Bill Burr and the way he plays with a mic. I don't know. I'm going to find it out along with you guys, unless you've already seen it yourself, you might have, but I figured this would be kind of interesting because I have watched so many Bill Burr videos and done, you know, so many different reactions to his comedy. I feel like I'm pretty uh, familiar with his style by now. It's been a few months, so I should be. And I've listened to him on, on Joe Rogan. I've heard little clips of his, of his podcasts and, and things like that. So I feel sufficiently comfortable with him in his art to have a full appreciation for what this is going to be talking about. Now, maybe I'm overanalyzing it. Maybe it's not going to be what I think it's going to be, but I'm really curious to find out. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. Fire one. I'd like to talk about a tool that every comedian has, but few actually use. This thing. While many discard the microphone as mic. just a way to amplify the voice, it actually has a huge amount of potential to play with sound. And sorry, by the way, getting a little technical here. Yes, I'm doing this. So when I first got into audiobooks, I learned about different types of mics. I didn't know the difference. And I learned the difference between a condenser mic and a dynamic mic, which condensers are what is most often used in things like audiobook production, uh, stuff like that. Dynamic mics are used more for singers um and with with singing and you know speeches and things like that because they are like their pattern of capturing sound is different and it's not as sensitive as a condenser mic which you know you can hear a mouse fart in the other room that's how sensitive they are and but dynamics consequently they have to be really close to the mouth in order to pick up the audio really good so that's why a lot of times if people didn't know because I didn't used to know that's why a lot of times uh, you'll see a singer or a stand-up comic with the mouth pretty I mean the mouth the mouth pretty close to their mouth the mic pretty close to their mouth it's because it's a dynamic mic all right just a little bit of technical stuff right? to amplify the voice it actually has a huge amount of potential to play with sound volume and perspective mute this
but for real. <laughs> what is it about? In this video, we'll focus on one comedian who uses the mic better than almost anyone. Ron Howard lookalike and aggressive red howler monkey that's escaped from the zoo and is now desperately marking its territory. <laughs> Bill Burr in his 2014 special, I'm Sorry You Feel That Way. Oh, and when I say one. using the mic, I'm not just talking about his podcast. Oh, this is going to be spoilers, you guys. Because I've heard about this and I've been planning to try to check it out. Shoot. Oh, well, whatever. I'm going with it. Or you feel that way. And when I say using the mic, I'm not just talking about his podcast. Bill, my name is Jessica. Holy shit, a lady! Okay, let's go. <laughs> Most comedians keep the mic in a set position, usually by their chin or by their chest. They won't move it around too much because they want the sound to be consistent and their voice to be consistently heard, which makes sense, right? I mean, for most comedians, moving the mic around is completely counterintuitive, which is not to say that other comedians... I'm sorry, I was just commenting on Michelle Wolf. I did see a little clip of her. I'm not sure how much of her I can take. It's not her fault. It really isn't. It's me. I have sensitive ears and certain noises just kind of don't sit well with me. So I'm not sure that I'll watch any of her stuff. I think I would I would be a little biased against her. Against her. Um, because her voice, it just doesn't sit well in my ears. I don't know. I guess it's not her fault. Like I said, I'm just. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. In the mic around is completely counterintuitive, mm -hmm. which is not to say that other comedians don't use the mic in interesting ways. Some use it to provide emphasis. He just walks in and just sheds it all. He just... <laughs> or a sound effect. <laughs> Noel Fielding did this. You all had to read my thoughts. <laughs> what okay. Burr does is slightly more fundamental. Firstly, he doesn't keep the mic in a set position at all. Oh, this, this is, is partly because story, he's right? constantly moving around, acting things out. Get that savage off my property! <laughs> Get out of here! But also because he knows he'll often sound funnier when his voice is more inconsistent. You'll notice that when Burr wants to appear calm or in control, he has control over the microphone. He speaks into the mic directly at a consistent volume. He may even keep the mic still for comic effect. She, she makes them and then I'm supposed to sprinkle the sugar on them. I don't even think they taste that good. But it's just... When Burr becomes more agitated, however, usually angry, scared, or frustrated, he will lose control of the mic. Burr will demonstrate this either by sliding the mic back and forth. Turn around and see a 37-year-old mustachioed male going, whoo, 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 or moving the mic away from also his voice. He's Jesus Christ, so. when do you stop picking up your kids when they're like five or six? Like, hey, get off of me, Jesus Christ. You're gonna throw out my back. Oh, jump on your brother. The sudden changes in Burr's vocals brother. add a hilarious kind of chaos yeah, to his routines. Do. You gotta try to pick her up there. You see these muscles like... Ah! 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 In this joke, for example, Burr is impersonating a politician campaigning to cull the human population <laughs> to a more manageable size. Oh, okay. Quickly note how he slips the mic into the stand to imply a political podium. Coming out there, and if elected... I would implement a program to immediately eliminate at least 85% of you. <laughs> However, the joke only gets a big laugh when Bird does this. This planet cannot sustain the sheer numbers. Let me finish! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By simply yelling this line away from the mic, okay. Burr says everything you need to know about the situation he's acting in. You can almost see the pitchforks and torches beginning to appear around him. Back! Back, please! Back! I warn you! Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. He doubles down on this a few moments later. This will not be arbitrary. Under your seats is a multiple choice questionnaire. If you did not bring a pencil, you're already out! 
<laughs> In one motion, Bird leans forward and pulls the microphone away from his voice. I think for the same reason that the shot in The Simpsons robs Homer of all his power and authority, when Burr pulls the mic from his voice, it sounds like he's completely lost control of the situation. Instead, he sounds more distant, pathetic, and ridiculous. Which- See, I never would have thought about it that way. So this guy has really analyzed his stuff. He's really, he's, he's put some... Uh, some some very conscious thought into it. And I just sit there when I'm watching Bill Burr or any comedian, really, I'm just kind of absorbing it. And intuitively, I, I hear the comedy for what it is, but I don't think about maybe the reasons why he's doing that. And I wonder if Bill Burr is even thinking about that, if that's even a conscious thing with him, or if that's just something that comes to him naturally as he's performing. I don't know. I mean, surely he he knows what he's doing. So maybe it is something that's been very clearly uh, a, a design or a, an aspect of his performance. Instead, he sounds more distant, pathetic and ridiculous, which makes his desperate displays of emotion even funnier. How's your father's project coming along? I think he's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's done. Burr uses the microphone in more elegant ways, too. In this joke, Burr is talking about walking away from religion. After years of doubt and insecurity, he realizes he can either cling on to something he doesn't really believe in, or... Just let go of it, like like that creepy moment in curling. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know that moment where the shooter, whatever, whatever yeah. you call him, is just sliding with that rock, right? Just... Let me do this right. Just slide. <laughs> and you think he's along for the ride. The two of them, they're a team. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just goes fucking. Yeah. At this point, the joke appears to be over. Burr steps back up, ready to walk away. But by simply being aware of what he's holding in his hand, Burr is able to return to the joke to add a final compelling punchline. I didn't read a riot act to anybody. I just, I just, I just let go of it. And on the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the- <laughs> It's a really smart, simple yeah. use of the mic that's also a perfect yeah. metaphor. You can't help but laugh at the sheer relief on Burr's face as he watches all his religious doubts slowly drift away. You better slide that time. The best case of Burr's use of the microphone is his renowned helicopter joke. Mm. This is probably the best example of Burr combining every comedic talent he has, showcasing his warped perspective Mm. while demonstrating an uncanny ability to play with our own. What is that? Shut the fuck up and get in! Basically, the joke takes place from two perspectives. One, a helicopter pilot who gives a guided tour to a passenger. The other, the passenger, who midway through the flight, leaps from the aircraft. Burr acts out this climactic moment from each character's perspective, the pilot's being first. Note how he uses the mic stand as the control stick of the helicopter, both to set the scene and also lay out the physical space inside the helicopter itself. All right, if you look out the left side of the aircraft, (laughs) that's Orange County. There's over 27 miles of beaches. Uh, Put your seatbelt back on. 27 (laughs) miles of beaches. Was established as a county in 1903. Sir, please don't open the door. Sir, what are you doing? Sir, no, no, don't, don't, stop, no, no. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god! Oh my god! You get the idea. For the next part of the joke, Burr reveals the passenger was terminally ill, an older man who realized he couldn't be cured and decided to take his life back into his own hands. Fuck you, disease. I decide. You know, ripping tubes out, gets a burger, shotguns a beer. With this in mind, Burr switches perspective. He situates himself to the left of the mic stand, Mm -hmm. retaining the space he laid out in the first sequence. Brilliantly, however, instead of giving voice to the passenger, 
who repeats the speech of the pilot. Over, over 27 miles of beaches. Put, put your seatbelt back puts on. it over there. Not only is the audience immediately the aware of what Burr is doing, but we now hear the pilot's speech exactly as the passenger would have heard it. Yeah. Only now, away from the microphone, the words of the pilot sound as quiet and irrelevant to us as they would have to the passenger himself. Establishes the county in 1903. Sir, please don't try to open the door. Burr finishes the sequence by matching up the physical gestures he made from the pilot's perspective before letting out a final chaotic scream, <laughs> whipping the mic back and forth as the wind rushes up yeah. to meet him. Burr switches between these perspectives so effortlessly that you hardly notice how much time it would have taken to perfect. Of course, yeah. knowing Bill Burr, Probably the joke part. doesn't quite end there. Yeah. I left out one small thing. There is one small thing. The guy fucking lived. <laughs> yeah. I know. Listen, it's it's funny because like the the the, gro the groans of like, oh no, he lived, and it doesn't mean necessarily that they're glad that they wanted him to die. It's just they know that that sort of fall and living through something like that would be just horrific. Uh, if, if anybody has never seen this little bit of his, the, the guy did die later. Um, but uh, which is, can you just imagine the pain? But the way he acted out the pain that the guy must have felt when he landed and he didn't die right away, that was actually pretty funny. One small thing, the guy fucking lived. <laughs> yeah. But that's another video entirely. In many ways, the helicopter joke that. describes the two voices battling inside Burr's head. One is the sane, rational man who wants to follow the rules. The other is the absolute nutcase who wants to throw it all to the wind and leap into oblivion. It's really no wonder who Burr ends up siding with. What Burr hints at in this special... Oh, that's something I didn't think about, about the, the comparison of the two... The pilot and the hello and and the 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 uh, passenger, that it is kind of like a metaphor for what is going on inside his head. That's that's really an excellent observation. Kudos to this guy for that. Wonder who Burr ends up siding with. What Burr hints at in this special is a similar relationship between balance and risk. To use the microphone as a genuine comic device instead of an oversized volume button. It's interesting to consider that most comedians' jokes would work regardless of whether they had a microphone or not. If Burr didn't have a microphone, a lot of his material wouldn't work at all. It has a happy ending, though. He later died at the hospital. That's right. So here's to him. God bless him. I hope I have the ball someday. <laughs> Oh, well, that was, that was pretty interesting. I don't think there's anything else at the end. Yeah, that was, that was really well done. I'm curious to check out more of their stuff. He, this guy really analyzed it very well. And, and just, he pointed out things that just never would have occurred to me because I don't always, a lot of times things I've mentioned before, I can be kind of slow sometimes. A lot of times, a lot of times some things as far as symbolism and uh, double meanings or other meanings or underlying meanings or whatever, they just kind of go right over my head. Some of it is just because I'm focused on a certain aspect of it and, and don't, I'm not really stopping to think about this other part of it that's, that is, is going on. I don't know, you know, that, that's, that's just me. So maybe sometimes I feel like, I mean, you could potentially say that this guy's overthinking it, that that's really not what's going on. But I no, I, I think actually there's something to it. because It makes sense based on all of the Bill Burr videos I've seen so far. And there have been quite a few. So, um, but yeah, I, that's, that's um, impressive. And I'm glad I checked it out. I'm glad I made it my first... Um, my first sort of reaction video back because I just really wasn't in the mood for something. I mean, maybe I should have actually, maybe I should have gone for something that was going to make me cr 
crack up really hard because I kind of need that. But at the same time, I just, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit more somber and not necessarily in the mood to laugh like hilarious, you know, just crazily. And I, I felt like this would sort of combine two things that uh, seem like they would fit for me right now. Something that's a little bit more on the serious side or a little bit more analytical and, and whatever mixed with a bit of the comedy, especially comedy from someone who has quickly become one of my favorites as far as watching his stuff. And that would be Bill Burr. I mean, I, like I've mentioned before, I spread his videos out because I don't want to watch all of his stuff. I want to take my time with it and just kind of savor each one as, as they go along. If I just gobble them all up right now, then they're gone. Dang it. Anyway. Okay. Well, I don't have anything else to add to this. So I'm going to, um, call this one quits and hopefully I can get it edited and up in time for Monday. I'm trying to get back in the groove and um, trying to feel a little bit, you know, get a little bit out of the funk that I've been in. So um, I feel like this was a pretty decent, decent one to start with. So, okay, you guys later. Oh, sorry. I say later, but that was, I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I should edit that out. No, I'm not. Screw it. Um, this coming Sunday, December 20th, and I will mention it as the week goes on. I'm going to do a live stream. I don't know yet what time. I'm going to do a live stream with my boss that I did an interview with a week or so ago. Well, I did, I did the interview with him for that, but it went up a couple Fridays ago. Or I can't remember, whatever. Interview with my boss is the title if you want to go check it out. And we got to talking about the audio drama, The Sandman, that came out earlier this year. I had done a reaction and commentary to the trailer for it, and I was pretty impressed with it. And I used one of my audio, book, my audio credits on Audible to get it, but I hadn't gotten around to seeing it, I mean, listening to it. And so we both started talking about it, and we both decided we were going to listen to this book and have a live stream discussion about it on Sunday, December 20th. Um, time to be determined as I know more about the schedule going forward. I am quite behind on listening to it. I still have almost eight hours left. Oh, so bad. But I've been so busy. Also, in addition to everything else that's been going on. But I'm planning to catch up. I'm going to get this thing done. So if anybody has listened to The Sandman, or even if you haven't, if you're just kind of interested to join the, the you know, the live stream discussion in the chat, um, hope to see you there. And maybe we'll have kind of a interesting, fun discussion about it. I never know when I go into something like this or something like, let's say, the live stream, how I'm going to actually be able to do. Like, I don't know. I'm, I always doubt myself. Am I, am I going to be able to offer anything useful to think about or talk about or or Am I, am I going to have anything? So I don't know if I feel like I'm not doing that great of a job. I'm just going to let Jeff talk most of the time. But I wanted to add this to just kind of put a bug in y'all's ear about the upcoming schedule for that. And um, hope to see you there. And that is it for real this time. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.